The Delta variant of the coronavirus, first identified in India, is sweeping around the world and is the dominant strain, for example, in the US and here in the UK and elsewhere. And now the largest survey of its kind tells us that having two doses of a COVID vaccine does offer pretty good protection. Researchers at the University of Oxford analysed nearly 3.5 million COVID tests between December last year and the 1st of August this month. Well, Sarah Walker is Professor of Medical Statistics and Epidemiology at the University of Oxford. She's the Chief Investigator and Academic Lead for the COVID-19 Infection Survey. Uh, Sarah, thank you very much for being with us here on BBC World News. First, give us your, your headline thoughts about the efficacy of getting two jabs. Yeah, so it's clear that the vaccines are not working quite as well as they did against Alpha. Um, but Two doses are still giving good protection um, against new infections with Delta. So you're... So do, yeah, I'm, I've got bad echo, haven't I? So you're looking particularly at Pfizer and AstraZeneca. Was there any data about any other um, vaccines in your survey? So we can look at a single dose of Moderna, and actually a single dose of Moderna does very well. Um, what we can also say is that if you've had COVID before, you still do much better with two doses um, than, e than, than not being vaccinated at all. So very strong findings supporting vaccination really, really for everyone to think about. But what is different with um, Delta than Alpha is the fact that if you do happen to get COVID after being vaccinated, so remember that's a much smaller chance, but if you do get it, we now find that you have similar levels of virus in your nose and throat as someone who gets COVID without having been vaccinated. And so that's completely different from Alpha, where actually if you got COVID, you tended to have much less virus and no symptoms. And that does mean that there is the potential for people who get COVID after being vaccinated to still pass it on. So it's important for people to understand that there, there is that potential risk of onward transmission. It does sound very important because so many decisions are being made about whether to allow double jabbed people into venues, onto airplanes, on the base, the thinking that if you're double jabbed, you're unlikely to pass it on. We shouldn't be so complacent, perhaps. So I think it's important to remember that you're still much, like, much less likely to get it in the first place. So by definition, if you're less likely to get it at all, you're less likely to be able to pass it on. We still don't know enough about transmission um, from people who've had two vaccinations. We weren't able to look at that directly. It could be that you have a high viral load for a less long period of time. It could be that the virus is also partly crippled by the immune system already, but we just don't know that. What it, it's important for people to understand is there is at least that potential to pass on. So people shouldn't assume that they can't pass it on to somebody else. That does sound like a very important message. What is your thinking about booster jabs for those who've had two already? Yeah, so the goal of boosters is to really stop hospitalizations and deaths. And we weren't able to look at that directly. So we're looking at new infections. What's really interesting is that when we look at how the protection you get from vaccination changes over time from your second dose, for AstraZeneca, we really don't have evidence that it changes at all. Any changes we saw were too small to have statistical certainty about. Whereas with Pfizer, initially, the effectiveness is about 15% greater than AstraZeneca, but that changes over time and it declines over the months following second vaccination. So by around four to five months, the two vaccines look similar. And let me be really clear, the protection they're still giving then is really good far better than we might have hoped for. So there's no immediate cause for concern, but it does suggest we need to monitor this very carefully. And importantly, that the two vaccines really may not be doing the same kind of thing. They may be quite different, and therefore it's certainly something that policymakers will need to think quite carefully about when they think about boosters. It may be that they're more important for one of the vaccines than another. Professor Sarah Walker, I think it's very important that we heard from you directly as the academic lead on this study. Thank you for joining us.